just the protein enzymes by themselves can't do everything. There's some catalytic jobs that are beyond the capacity of a protein built with the standard 20 amino acids. If you think about those R groups in the 20 amino acids, many of them are hydrocarbons. There's a couple acid groups, a couple of uh, uh, base groups. There's a reactive sulfur group. But it, it's a limited toolkit of chemistry available in those R groups. These are proteins, these are the R groups that are going to be doing the chemistry. So sometimes they need help. So sometimes an enzyme by itself is not functional until a small molecule docks to it and helps it out. That helper molecule is known as a cofactor. It can be something as simple as uh, a metal ion, like a magnesium ion, is a common cofactor. Anything that handles the phosphorylated substrate often has a magnesium cofactor. Sometimes the cofactor is a small organic molecule. Non-protein organic molecule. So if that's the case, we call that kind of cofactor a coenzyme. So cofactor is a general term. And um, you would call, if you want to be highly specific of something like magnesium, you call it an inorganic cofactor. Other cofactors that are carbon-based, like biotin or so on, you'd call that a coenzyme. And these things usually can come to the enzyme, bind to it, or fall off. They're bound by ionic forces or other weak forces. Sometimes, though, the cofactor, the organic cofactor, is tightly wrapped up in the protein structure so that it doesn't fall off. Hemoglobin isn't an enzyme, but you may know the structure of hemoglobin is a big protein. It's got a heme group buried in it. A heme has the iron in it. That is so wrapped up in the protein that it just never falls off. That kind of thing with enzymes, the coenzyme is so tightly bound that you virtually have to unravel the whole protein to get it off. Then you call it a prosthetic group. 